Motherly instinct had kicked in pretty early, maybe about the four or five months age. I was really concerned about him just always having these ear infections and being sick and his enlarged abdomen. You know, he was a good eater, so we just thought that he was just a chunky baby. But then as he got older, probably about a year old, he had really skinny arms, skinny legs, and just his real big abdomen. He was sick on a monthly basis, and every time we went into the urgent care, we just saw a different pediatrician. It was whoever was on call, so we never had a consistent doctor that would follow up with him. They just kept telling me he just had frequent ear infections and just a lot of colds, and we lived up in Connecticut at the time, so it was pretty common for children up there with the cold weather. Then he started draining out of his ears, so that's where the ear infections just started to progressively get worse. I was just really frustrated because I felt like I was, getting, I was going around in a circle. It was just like this monthly thing, holiday after holiday. You know, we just couldn't do much with him because he was always sick. Diagnosis process was a nightmare. When I first went to see the nurse practitioner, which it was just that one visit, because she was the one that was on call, I think she realized that I was pretty upset and desperate for some answers regarding what was going on with him being really sick all the time. So she, a couple of days later, she had said she had went back and looked at his record and realized that he had had one too many ear infections in the last year and that she felt that he needed to see an ENT for his ears. We first went to the ENT doctor. Pretty much all he did was look in his ears and realize that James needed some tubes in his ears, but he then scheduled us to go have a sleep study because he wanted to see if James needed to have his adenoids and tonsils removed at the same time. The ENT got suspicious that James might have had hunters by just looking at his facial features, also by looking at his abdomen. I think his record also showed a lot of ear infections, which is consistent with uh, the Hunter syndrome. So I think that's where his curiosity came from to get him involved with a geneticist. The day we went for the sleep study, before James got hooked up and everything, he came in and he said, you know, next time you come back, I'm gonna have the geneticist come see you so that they can do some testing on him. Just cause I'm just curious, you know, maybe there's something else going on and you know, it's kind of, that's more of their expertise. And so we agreed to that. And so when we came back for the two replacements, that's when they came and did the urine test. And that came back positive for a storage disorder. Then it probably took a couple of months, probably three to four months after that, by the time they did the blood test and were waiting for the blood test results to come back. James got diagnosed over the phone, which was pretty traumatic for me. One of the counselors in the office called me and said that James' blood test had tested positive. Um, and so I said, well, what does that mean? And she was like, well, he has a, a syndrome called Hunter's. And that was pretty hard because I didn't, I had so many questions and I wanted so many answers, but I couldn't get them at that time. So I remember I was in the kitchen and James was laying a blanket in the living room. And I remember walking in there and probably screened for like good 10, 15 minutes. Um, just not knowing what his future was like, what my future was like, what we were looking at. Once he was diagnosed, they really became a team. Even though it was very hard for me um, and for his dad, I think that they kind of walked us through this whole process as to what we needed to do and make sure we were going in the right direction. They always be memorable to me because I know that they were the team that helped me diagnose him and be able to care for him throughout the years, just knowing what he had. I think it would have been worse if he would have developed you know, these symptoms and not knowing what he had and how to care for him. So I'm very grateful to them for that.